what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It is Kevin Forte coming to you today with a video uh, discussing the Columbus Blue Jackets. We have two things to really discuss today. Uh, the first, which is breaking news out of the Blue Jackets last week, which is Yarmo Kekalainen, no longer the general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's been with the organization as general manager for 11 seasons, and he has officially hit the end of his road in Columbus. Uh, kind of a sad day, I think, for most of the hockey community. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's a, a purely business decision at this point. He's been there for a long time. You know, the results really haven't been there. Uh, during his tenure with the Columbus Blue Jackets, they have only won one playoff series in his 11 seasons in Columbus. They've only made the playoffs five times in his career, and one of them being in his first season, which, you know, how much control did he really have over that? Um, you know, the Blue Jackets are one of those teams that they've always been that um, kind of the, the, uh, the, the stepchild everybody forgets about. And they're considered a smaller market team compared to other franchises in the NHL. And, you know, when they're doing well and they're successful, um, there's a lot of buzz there. But, you know, what people don't talk about, you know, even last season and even this season, the numbers in Columbus in terms of selling out games and tickets is still very good. Uh, they have a very good turnout, a good attendance every year. So it's not a situation where the fans aren't showing up or they're there. It's more so just the lack of results on the ice. And, and that's maybe kind of holding them back from even getting to that next level. Um, so, you know, obviously a quick deep dive into his seasons. Really his most successful season was the 2018-2019 uh, season. Uh, they snuck into the playoffs the final weeks of the season. They went, quote unquote, all in, right? They, instead of trading Bobrovsky and Panarin at the deadline, they decided to keep those guys. They go all in. They picked up Matt Duchesne. They picked up a couple of other guys, if I'm not mistaken, right? They made some moves to try and push for the playoffs. And they did that. And they beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round of the playoffs, shocking the hockey world. And that was kind of it. And then, you know, the pandemic happens. Um, they lose in the first round of the playoffs. I think they played Nashville or something like that because it was the weird COVID year where they also played in the Central Division. And it was one of those things where uh, the Blue Jackets just never got back to where they wanted to go. And, you know, right up until the pandemic, they were actually doing fairly well. They were fourth in their division, fifth, fourth, third, and then they have not been anywhere near toward the top since then. Um, during that time, uh, since the beginning of the tenure for Yarmo Kekalainen, they've had uh, three coach, well, this is now their fourth coach. So they had Todd Richards, John Tortorella, Brad Larson, and Pascal Vincent. Uh, and so that's four coaches over those 11 seasons, which, you know, it's pretty much a coach every other year. It's not really the best situation. But that's kind of where the black the, the Blue Jackets have been. And if you really want to consider Mike Babcock, who was hired as coach last year, we'll get to that in a minute, that's technically five head coaches that were hired during the Yarmo Kekalainen era. So let's start off with some of the cons, because I think it's, it's very nice to look at the pros last. So we'll, we'll kind of end it with a good taste in our mouths. But uh, the Babcock hiring was the first one. And I think that's one that, you know, I kind of saw this coming because after that whole situation with Babcock last summer, a lot of people were wondering right off the bat, why did they hire this guy? What's the mindset here? But that's part of what made Yarmo Kekalainen such a good GM. And, and that's kind of what separates Yarmo from me and you compared to him as, you know, why is he a GM and why am I not a GM? Uh, he was outside the box. He took chances. He stuck to his guns. He stuck to his word. And that really built a good culture there in Columbus that was really, really positive for many years. And I think that's one of the things that kind of a negative turning into a positive is the fact that he was very, you know, he would make moves that other people would say, oh, that's probably not the best move. He would still go out and do it and it would be successful. And very similar to that, the Panarin and Bobrovsky thing, right? And it sent a really good message to Columbus, and despite what everybody around the league is like, what is what is Kekalainen doing, right? He's going to give these guys up for nothing this summer and this and that. It meant so much more than that for the city of Columbus, and that's something that me or you might not do, but he was willing to go out on a limb and do. Same thing with bringing in Pascal Vincent and John Tortorella and Larson. 
all moves that were kind of like, I don't know if that's the best move, but he still did it anyway. And that's kind of what made him what he was. Um, you know, the, the lack of regular season success was, was really the downfall. The, the main pillar of uh, Yarmo Kakalainen's tenure is, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's, what have you done, right? What is your, you know, there have been many GMs that have not made good trades, that have not been good at drafting, that have not made good signings, but yay, yeah, they won a Stanley Cup. Now, obviously, that doesn't happen very often, but it's all about, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you don't win the season during the off season, right? If you win at in free agency and at the draft, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win on the ice during the regular season. And that's something that kind of happened to Columbus a few times is they would do really well at the draft. They would do really well in free agency or whatever, but it never really translated into results during the season. And that really ended up being a real problem for this team. And, you know, over 11 seasons, only making the playoffs four or five of those 11 seasons and only making the playoff, going to the second round once, it's just not enough. It's not enough success. Um, and that really hurt them. Uh, another thing I actually forgot to mention here and in my notes, but a very important point, which I think is really important right now, is the whole situation um, with David Juracek. Uh, he came out earlier this year talking about how he was upset with the franchise, how he wasn't getting ice time in North America. He had been playing in Europe and was kind of expecting to come over to the States at some point. It still hasn't happened yet. So I think there's a little frustration there, a little bit of angst, and maybe a little bit of a um, a little bit of an abrasive relationship between Juracek and the Blue Jackets franchise right now. And I wonder how much Yarmo Kekalin is firing right now has to do with that Juracek thing. And as much as you'd like to say it doesn't, I think it very much does have something to do with the timing. And you also have to think, if the Blue Jackets, you know, they're not doing well right now, they're toward the bottom of the division once again, and do they want to go into the trade deadline and the draft with a guy that they know they're going to be letting go of? It doesn't make much sense. So I think the combination of knowing that this is going to happen either now or in the summer and avoiding what he could do during the trade deadline to try and fix it and maybe make things worse long term, you know, that might have been part of it. And also, like I said, the Eurocheck thing. I think definitely played a factor in this. And maybe the mismanagement or the lack of good communication with Eurocheck and his staff uh, and his camp there in, in Eurocheck's situation, uh, that might have had a lot to do with it. Obviously, let's get to the pros. I kind of mentioned this earlier with the Babcock hiring, which is kind of weird, but the identity of the Blue Jackets and the way Yarmo Kekalainen kind of runs things. Now, obviously, that's a that's kind of been a flaw here with the Juracek situation, but for the most part, he has had very good communication with his players. He's been very firm and, and you know, kind of, he sticks to his guns. He's going with what he thinks is right. And I think that's done him very well in his time in Columbus. And I think that's something that a lot of people really respect in Columbus and understand that you know, that was something that he really brought to the table for this franchise. Uh, really, the key thing that I think really kept Kekalainen around was some of the drafting he did. And, of course, the easy ones at the top of the list, right? Like, you know, Cole Sillinger last year. Um, uh, who am I thinking of? I'm, I'm forgetting some of the names. Uh, I'm trying to remember. You know, even back in the day, he kind of made a... a a bold move going after Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, at the, I think it was the second or third overall pick. That ended up being a really good pick for the Blue, the Blue Jackets. And that was a guy at the time, I remember, I was like, wow, I didn't even know that guy was going in the top 10. But Yarmo went out, he got the guy he wanted. And that's the kind of thing, you know, that drafting-wise, that, that plays a factor. And it's easy to get, take guys like Juracek, right, Sillinger. Those guys were at the top. But then they've also done a really good job of the depth drafting. Uh, Denton Matejic, uh, Stanislav Soville, uh, and Gavin Brindley are very good young prospects that are hopefully coming up in the system for the Columbus Blue Jackets. So that's kind of what we've seen over Kekalainen's career is his ability to draft. And I wouldn't be surprised if his next role is some kind of like head amateur scouting or something like that, where maybe he's not necessarily a manager. Maybe he's an assistant GM with a heavy focus on on um, on scouting because he seems to have that down pat. And anybody he brings with him in his next location, I think will have some kind of part of the, the scouting situation because he's done a very good job with that in Columbus. Um... You know, and then he kind of closed out as we move on to the next topic, uh, the Stadium Series game. Uh, Kekalainen said, you know, his biggest regret uh, in his time in Columbus wasn't a trade, wasn't a signing, wasn't anything like that. Um, 
it actually came down to not getting a cup in Columbus. Uh, he really thinks that the Blue Jackets, the city of Columbus, deserved a Stanley Cup, and he wasn't able to fulfill that. So that just shows you the testament of what Yarmo Kekalainen is all about. And he's a really good guy. You know, everything I've seen from him, a lot of players, you know, sometimes they get a little annoyed with him, but overall he's trying to do what's best for the franchise. And I think that really resonates uh, with a lot of the guys on those teams. Uh, so that's it for the Kekalainen discussion. Uh, kind of the second half of this video is talking about uh, the Stadium Series game in 2025, which is very, very exciting. Of course, the Stadium Series is coming up this weekend um, here in the New Jersey, New York metro area uh, at, at MetLife Stadium. But uh, 2025, the game will be going out to Columbus, Ohio at the Horseshoe, the home of the Ohio State Buckeyes football team. We've heard those rumors now for the really the last year, year and a half, uh, that we might see an outdoor game up in the Horseshoe, and it is expected to be March 1st of 2025. It's going to be the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Detroit Red Wings in an outdoor stadium series game. I think this is a great idea by the NHL. This is one I would have liked to probably seen as a winter classic, in all honesty. Um, I think the whole stadium series thing is actually kind of overblown at this point. It's kind of diluting the outdoor experience of the game. And I'd like to see this as an... I would have rather seen this as an as an, a winter classic. Now, I think what they're saying to themselves is, well, we'd rather have a city like Chicago or Detroit or Boston, who is a big hockey market, um, and, and get a lot of you know national attention for that game as our Winter Classic, our Super Bowl game. Meanwhile, Columbus is kind of regarded as a smaller market, you know, kind of a college market-esque level uh, where the NHL doesn't want to do that. And I think that's stupid. I think that, you know, Columbus deserves a Winter Classic, not just a Stadium Series game. I think they're kind of uh, doing them a disservice here. And, and yes, of course, they're playing Detroit, an original six franchise, big, big fan base, right? They travel well. So that's not going to be a problem for this game either. But, um, you know, I think it was a missed opportunity making this a Winter Classic. But I digress. It'll be a fun game. Hopefully we'll see the jerseys here, um, you know, probably the probably this time next year. Because we saw late the NHL gave out the Stadium Series jerseys for this year. We'll probably find out mid-January uh, the jerseys for that game. So stay tuned to the channel for that stuff. Uh, like I said, it's going to be kind of a fun game outdoors once again. Um, so we'll see how things go. So let me know what you guys think down below. What do you guys think of the Yarmo Kekalainen in hiring? What do you guys think of um, the Stadium Series game heading to Columbus next year? A lot of Blue Jackets news, surprisingly, here in the middle of February. But let me know your guys' thoughts. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Peace out, guys.